Hello, everybody. This is John with John Menarsic Fine Art, welcoming you to a plain air oil painting adventure. This is a nice little overcast day on uh, Saturday, August 13th, and we're at, get this name of this place, Rock Run Rookery. Yeah, believe it or not, that's the name of it. It's a uh, nature preserve in Joliet, Illinois, and it's actually not that far from where my wife works in a tanker company, so it's, you know, nice little haven out in the middle of uh, nowhere, it looks like. Got a lot of really nice heron and some swans here and there. You got a ton of, you know, chipmunks and all kinds of wildlife. You got some people you can tell in the, if you look just at the top right corner of my uh, panel there, you got a boat out there, somebody fishing. It's a real beautiful place. And we got really lucky too, because probably about five minutes after I finished this painting, it started to rain on us. And um, I don't know, it was just perfect. So anyways, here's an overcast sky that I'm painting on an overcast day. And how do you do an overcast sky? Simple. You add a little bit of uh, alizarin crimson to your French ultramarine and white. And then you kind of smooth it out to the degree that you want. And you go from there. I'm going to have a tree line in there. And I'm going to do the trees differently than you see there. Okay. Okay. The trees you see in the background are background trees. And you can see they're mainly greens, deep greens, and they got a lot of blue in them. I'm not going to do that. And the only reason why is because I want to have something a little closer to mid-ground trees. So I'm actually going to tap in trees with some trunks. The trunks aren't going to be pronounced, but you're still going to be able to see them. And I'm going to put some ochres in there, like yellow ochre, and I'm going to put some browns just to kind of break it up because I wanted a variety of color. So what I'm doing here is I'm just using my round brush and I'm just putting in where I want the different tree trunks and shapes. And then I'm going to use a fan brush to kind of diffuse the color. And what I'm doing when I diffuse the color is I'm going to keep the trunks there, but I'm going to soften them up so they're not pronounced. And that's the only thing that I wanted to um, make sure is they weren't I didn't want them to be like a focal point, so I wanted to soften them up. And then once I started tapping in the foliage, you'd still see hints of them, but they won't be something that you see easily, if that makes any sense to you. And then what I'm also going to do is there's no flowers out here, and I love painting flowers if you watched any of my videos. So I'm going to put flowers in as this painting goes on, on the right and also on the uh, bottom left. And I'm just going to have a lot of fun and put in stuff that may or may not be there, but it doesn't matter. When you plain air paint, there's a lot of people that try to paint it exactly what they're looking at, and there's a lot of people that use what they're looking at as a starting point, and they let their imagination kind of take over from there. And that's kind of the school that I subscribe to, is I don't want to paint anything, whether it's a photograph or in person like I'm doing now, exact. I want to just, I want to get the lay of the land, let's say, and kind of the shapes and where everything is. And then I want to kind of take over from there and just kind of do it myself. Now, one of the things with plain air, as you can see the wind picking up too, I knew a storm was coming. I just was hoping I'd be able to get done beforehand. Right now, this, where we're at is probably about a mile hike from where we parked our car. My wife is the one taking the video. So if it was going to rain and dump on us, we were going to get soaked by the time we got back to the car. And luckily it didn't. It, uh, it was about, I mean, it started raining before I even was able to pack up, but it didn't really come down hard. It was just, you know, a little bit, so it wasn't too bad. And it was absolutely beautiful day anyways today. And uh, actually, this is yesterday the 13th. Today is uh, Sunday the 14th, which was also another beautiful day. And we went to Hamill Woods and did plein air painting today, the 14th, and I'm teaching my wife how to paint. She's been wanting to for a while, and she finally got up the nerve to say, hey, show me how to do this. So I've got an older um, backpack easel that uh, I let her use and, you know, gave her some brushes and some water mixable paint, which is what I'm using here, Daniel Smith water mixable oil paint, and let her have a go at it. And I tell you what. She did a really nice job. 
She really did. She's got very, very, very little experience with painting. But uh, she's a little awkward with the brush in her hand, which is normal for anybody that's a beginner. But uh, she did a very nice job. She uh, posted it on Facebook. She was all proud of herself. So, And I was, too. I was proud of her. She did a real, like I said, it turned out really good. And Hamill Woods is really nice. It's uh, That's another one. It's in Joliet. It's on uh, right off of Route 59. It's across from a Home Depot where the entrance is. And then after you get into this entrance for about, I don't know, a 1,000 feet, all of a sudden you have no idea that Route 59 is right behind you. And, you know, Home Depot and all kinds of other stores and cars and traffic, you never even know it. It's so quiet and peaceful and the... Um, the foliage and the trees are really dense. It's absolutely gorgeous. And that's one of the things I love about forest reserves. I mean, Illinois isn't known for, you know, its majestic, beautiful mountains and, you know, crystal blue uh, rivers. And, but Illinois has got some very beautiful forest reserves. Hamill Woods is where we went, uh, like I said, Sunday the 14th. Here is Rock Run Rookery. I have to really concentrate saying that name. Um, we go to, on my way to visit my folks, to the um, Cook County Forest Preserves, which has, um, check this out now, it has Saganasty Slough, Joe's Pond, Belly Deep Slough, Crawdad Slough, and Maple Lake. All of those lakes are within probably a three square mile area, and they're all absolutely beautiful. And you got people that uh, do ice skating on there in the wintertime, and they picnic and fish in the spring, summer, and fall. I do a lot of plein air painting over there. Sometimes we'll leave for my mom and dad's when we're going for dinner on a Saturday. We'll leave at, you know, an hour or so early, and we'll um, just stop on the way. And I'll have it to where you can just pull up with your car, open up your back hatch, and you can start painting right from there. One of the beauties of uh, plein air painting is, you know, you can pretty much paint anywhere you want. And it just depends on your setup. You don't take your entire studio with you. So you want to kind of limit a little bit of what you take. But uh, you can paint anywhere and just have a lot of fun. And plain air is a challenge, more so than a studio, because, you know, in your studio you have a real controlled environment where you don't outside. But I tell you what, it's so much fun outside. You know, you got the wind, you can see the little my uh, garbage bag blowing around all over the place because it's getting, the you know, storm fronts coming in. You got the overcast, which is actually ideal. Um, as much as I love the sun, it's better to have an overcast day when you're painting because you just see the color so much better. And you can tell just by the quality of video, you know, that I have right here that the lighting is perfect when it's overcast. But uh, it is a lot of fun. I apologize for the rant. I don't plein air paint anywhere near as much as I would like and as much as I'm going to, but I am getting more and more into it. And um, I will be posting a lot more videos from, you know, wherever we go. I've got um, Joe's Pond on the agenda coming up sooner than later. And I also want to do a couple of plain air palette knife paintings to where I use the knife only. Like this painting, I've used uh, the knife mainly just for the reflections on the water. And what I want to do is um, use the palette knife for the entire painting. And if you've seen any of my other videos, you've seen that I don't do a lot of that, but I do have several videos where the painting is done with a palette knife completely. As a matter of fact, the last one I did was a real big monster, a 24 by 36, I believe. And that was a palette knife only that I uh, did a video on. And that was, you know, I think four weeks ago. Five at the most, so not that long ago. So, one of the things that I love about being an artist is what they call an artistic license. And basically what that means is you can take whatever scene you want and make it into whatever you want. So, there is not any yellow in the back or brown. But I'm putting it in because I think it's interesting. This bank on the right and this like hill I'm hit doesn't exist, but it looked good to me to frame it that way. You could see the little peninsula to the left of my panel that I put down on the bottom left of the uh, painting. That doesn't have any flowers in it, but I put them in. That's an artistic license. 
I took this scene that I really liked and I sketched in the very beginning, you saw, where the main elements were and then I made those elements look like I want. Now, don't get me wrong. Nature is more beautiful than what I can do, but I thought it would be a little more interesting to have some more colors other than just the deep green, you know, basically one hue with the deep blue in the background, basically the one hue. So I wanted a little bit more variety. So I hope everybody enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider subscribing. And if you do hit that notification bell, I'm usually pretty good about uh, once a week uploading videos and uh, I plan on continuing to do that. So I hope everybody has a great uh, work week coming up and I will see you later.